Okay, yeah, I was messing around with my camera, then it fell and all that, but it, you guys don't really care. Someone said, you know, what's a good way for it to come to be a little bit more dynamic, have a more dynamic downtown? And they referenced in here Seattle, and they talk about how Seattle is trying to make a comeback and it's struggling to do so. And they're saying, you know, how can Tacoma come back? Or how can Tacoma make a strong presence? And how can we get cruise industries and things like that here? Well, great questions, right? Be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Technically, we do have a cruise company that is here in Tacoma. Noel, when she went to her counselor, he's right there on the waterfront and you, she saw people getting onto the cruise. Now, this is not the gigantic cruise ships that you see for Carnival. It's kind of like Windstar. And so they do sail between here and Olympia and some other places. And so they just kind of go around. It's expensive. The tickets are expensive. Very expensive. But anyway, so they, they do actually, and I think that the home base is Tacoma. I'm not for sure, but I do know that they definitely stop here. It's great because that is kind of the size of ship that would do well for Tacoma. Now, I do think we can get in something bigger, but what's great about this smaller cruise ship, which probably holds 200 people, I'm assuming, or 300, um, is that it is more of a, a touristy type of thing, right? It takes you to places where you can actually get off and walk around and, and take a look. It's not like you're just boarding it and taking off and hauling your way all the way to Canada or Alaska like what you have up in Seattle. This is more of saying that, hey, these are people that are not necessarily from here and they're coming to visit your city. And so they go around and do various different things. It's really great for the economy, and I would probably argue that that's better than just having a cruise ship that is here, kind of like in Miami. It's a big industry, don't get me wrong, but Miami is the king when it comes to cruise ships, and so obviously, you know, it gets a ton of money for that, but people get on that, and then they sail off, and then they come back, right? It's a big thing because you have a whole lot of people coming. It's really its own tourist destination, the cruise industry. A lot of people coming from all over, flying into Miami, getting on a cruise, and they're, they're leaving. All that money gets pumped in. When you look at Seattle, it's not really people coming in as much. Yeah, you have some people in this part of the country, so Idaho and Portland and other places who will probably come up uh, just to get on a cruise and go up to Alaska and Canada and stuff like that. Sure, you definitely do have that. But it is... The impact, I feel, is better when you have people who literally come here. And Seattle does too. <clears throat> the same company that cruises up to Seattle, or that comes here, cruises up to Seattle, I believe, and people get off and walk around. To me, that's great because it creates a, a situation where people are exploring downtown, looking around, going to different things, and it's, it's a great thing. But to answer your question, so that's the first part. To answer your question, what would be a more dynamic downtown? And I guess you're saying one that's a little bit more busier, that has a little bit more foot traffic. The biggest thing that downtown can do is things that are going to be very tourist heavy. And I say that kind of cautiously because I've been to places that are heavily traveled by tourists. Seattle is one of them. San Francisco, I've been to Boston, Chicago, and Miami, a few different places, right? Um, <clears throat> and so when you when you're there, you're just swallowed up by tourists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't go to some of the things that are interesting and fun when you live there because it's chucked full of tourists. And so some people don't mind it, some people hate it. Um, but it's what Tacoma kind of needs. The, the problem with Seattle is everything, when we're talking about touristy stuff, a lot of stuff is just right there along the waterfront. So really, within a, a certain ribbon of downtown is a lot of heavy touristy type stuff. And so, and then right next door to that is their um, retail corridor. So that area is notoriously busy in Seattle because of that just by itself. So when there's no cruise industry going on, like kind of the way that COVID 
did everything or when the tourism is down that area is very vulnerable because it relies heavily on that pike place market all these places they rely on that they would not survive if it was just the citizens of downtown seattle or just in seattle area they just wouldn't be able to survive given the rent prices just it's not possible so the tourism is needed there here we're kind of insulated we do get tourism it's 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 a we get quite a few but it's like what you would see at any other place it's kind of like my hometown of bowling green kentucky it has a lot of tourism because it is between louisville and nashville the only city of size and so it attracts a lot of people for different things beach bend is a theme park and different stuff corvette museum uh, all that stuff right there's a lot of things that attract people there and so it really is the one city that can bring people in quite more so than some of the others around the area it's just a natural thing there is not one core thing that just pulls people in Tacoma's the same way it has a lot of cool things that people want to come to the museum campus is one you know obviously people want to come see that point rustin's becoming a tourist destination so there's a lot of different th there's others there's a lot of different things that bring people here the theaters but it is not so heavily reliant. Our downtown is not so heavily reliant on tourists. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't know, to be honest with you, if we should build more of a downtown that has a touristy vibe to it, because then you have businesses that will come in, obviously, because of the tourists. But then when things like this happen, if you're too heavily reliant on tourists, then your economy tanks. And so that's what's going on in Seattle. It's going to take some time for Seattle to recover. It just will. It will. I mean, it's going to take some time for them to kind of get back into their stride and for the industry to catch up. It is starting to pick back up, no question. But downtown has changed drastically. For Tacoma, I do think that we should have quite a few tourist attractions that are spread throughout downtown. Because if you if you do what Seattle has done, where everything is right there on the waterfront, you know, the 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 wharf, I forget the name here or whatever it is. The the big eye. Is it the big eye? Or the great eye? I don't know. The big giant Ferris wheel. You know, Pike Place Market, all of those things are just right in that area. And so it, it feels very crowded because it's a lot of tourists right if it was kind of spread throughout downtown it would really help elevate downtown Seattle. in my small tiny opinion it would help elevate downtown seattle tacoma can learn from that and really say okay cool we have some attractions down here too obviously i mentioned museum campus where we have a lot of different museums that are kind of clustered right there we have point defiance we've already kind of you know, Point Defiance, Point Rustin, all those three things are big tourist draws. They're kind of separated from one another. When we're talking about near the city county building and stuff like that in downtown Tacoma, there should be more additional tourist attractions, big heavy hitters. I don't know what those would be, but there needs to be something that can provide a good punch that people want to definitely come and visit. Because once you start to spread the wealth, you start to spread where retail will go and you will spread where people want to live and where they want to be. You create a more dynamic downtown by doing that versus just in one ribbon, right? That's why some people feel weird when they walk around downtown Seattle back in the day and they stray off of the, the touristy area and they go into other parts of downtown Seattle and they're like, this is way different, way different, Right? And a lot of places are like that. But when you go to San Francisco, you don't get that vibe everywhere you go. It's just kind of dynamic until you go into the residential side of things. Every place is dynamic. San Francisco is a smaller piece of land than Seattle. I mean, both are small cities in size. Big population, small cities. But it did a better job of having these different type of tourist attractions. I think that Tacoma can learn from something like that and really put tourist attractions in different areas and really champion that. And so it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't take a lot of money to do. There's a lot of things that can be done that can really bring people to. One of the things that I think that Tacoma should definitely do as a city 
is to build a public market downtown. I think that it's beyond time for that to happen. Having a public market downtown would obviously help bring small businesses to the forefront. Excuse me, because these are going to be a lot of mom and pop type businesses, restaurants, eateries, farmers, all of those types of things would be great. Now, there has been talk of doing something similar to that for the existing farmer's market. It's kind of like a little pavilion, but I think it should go beyond that, to be honest with you. There should be a true farmer's market. Now, if you look at Milwaukee, for example, the Milwaukee public market was modeled after Pike Place Market in Seattle. They planned that. It was modeled after that. And so really it kind of fell short because they wanted it to be more identical to that, where you can go in and get fresh vegetables and food and stuff like that. It isn't as much, right? It's not, it's not quite like that, but they wanted it to be where you can go in and get a lot of fresh food and fresh vegetables and all of that, you know, farm to table type stuff. That's what they wanted. I think that we should, definitely try to get something like that. I've mentioned before that having some sort of a food hall would be an amazing thing. Again, it wouldn't take a lot of money. Wouldn't take a lot of money. Literally having a public market and a food hall at two different areas of downtown, I think would definitely create that kind of dynamic piece that would literally have people going to both places. And do I think that downtown is capable of handling both? Absolutely. Having a food hall and grocery store combo is a great idea, right? So one side of a building, let's say it's a one or one and a half or two story building. One side is a food hall where you have about 13 different eateries, local eateries. Then you have a huge area where people can sit down and eat. Then across the hall would be a small grocery store, 25,000 square foot format, so a small grocery store. That would be great. Public market can be someplace else downtown where you have a few different eateries there, like restaurants, eateries, things like that. You may have four. And then you have places where people can go and buy fresh fruits and vegetables anytime they would like. They can buy finished made goods. You know, my, my father-in-law made me this knife. Let me clean the dust off. I, I apologize. I have incense burning up there. So it's not like I never, I use this all the time when I'm cutting open stuff uh, for the studio. But he made this knife. It's really, really nice actually, right? I don't know if you can see the, sorry, there's dust. I don't know if you can see the detail on it, but it's there. Stuff like that. I have a buddy that makes wallets, right? Stuff like that. So having a public market where you can have those types of things, where you have fruits and vegetables and finished goods and products that people make, and then having something separate where you have a food hall and you have a grocery store, I see it as a win-win. And I do think that that would be a tourist attraction. It would mainly be a tourist attraction for somewhat local people. And what I mean by somewhat local people are people in the... Gig Harbor, Puyallup, University Place, uh, Federal Way, places like that where they would come in. We're never going to bring in the type of people that Seattle does. It's never going to happen. Even Bellevue doesn't get that. It does bring in quite a few tourists, but it's not like what you see up in Seattle. That may change when they open up the light rail line over there. But I don't think it's going to be as dramatic as what you see up in Seattle. I think the Tacoma could do these two easy things. And if the city does approve this uh, tax incremental financing, a TIFT district, which downtown should be it, then it would definitely be something they should do. I, my hometown, Bowling Green, Kentucky did that. They built a baseball park, a minor league baseball stadium downtown, which was a smart thing to do. I wish Tacoma had done that, right? I wish Tacoma, the new soccer stadium, that should go downtown, in my opinion, not way out where it is. Because that by itself brings people in. It creates vitality. It's a tourist draw. It's a tourist attraction. Now that tourist attraction is out of downtown. It's a bit away. But 
they built that and then the city of Bowling Green used their tax incremental financing to build a parking garage, but it's wrapped by apartments. They also built a performing arts center. Since then, downtown Bowling Green, Kentucky has been on a tear, right? So the city invested in these key things and rip, I mean, it's sad, but there are more people who go into downtown Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is only 70,000 people than they do downtown Tacoma because it's important what you put there. I never understood why cities put baseball parks and, and all that stuff way away from downtown. It just doesn't make sense to me. Unless you're in a place that's super crowded and you're not able to. But when you look at the Dome District, for example, that's downtown-esque. Or if you look at where the Tacoma Town Center is, that could have been a great place for a ball park. It's big enough for that, right? These are things that, in my opinion, cities definitely need to plan for and to and to and to put because you bring in quite a few people a lot of folks if they're tourists are not going to want to travel out there because again if they travel like i do i don't like renting a car i hate having the responsibility i hate the hassle i hate all of that i like to be able if i go to a downtown i want to be able to walk around and go around milwaukee was great because we got to tour a lot of different parts of the city and it was fairly simple. That was before their light rail actually opened up, their streetcar. And so now it's even easier, right? Nobody wants the, the hassle. And so if that would have been the case for Tacoma and they put the baseball stadium downtown, it would be a completely different story. It would be a tourist attraction too. I'm not saying it isn't now, but it would be even bigger. And having a soccer stadium downtown would be great. Dome District is a good example. They wanted an entertainment district over there. That would be an example of doing that. But anyhow, that's my opinions. I think that those are things that would be cool. Having some sort of an amusement type uh, ride of some sort downtown, I think would be cool too. Again, getting a developer or a park owner or someone that's willing to do that is another story, right? But I think that there's a lot of areas where that could be capitalized on um, and it just hasn't it just hasn't happened yet. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of things that come up all the time. You never know. I'm surprised every day by something new that comes up and I'm just shocked by it. Right. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe and comment. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.